Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Sims Proving Every Day. I'm Gina, and today we are back in build mode, and we are going to be talking about all things outside. Stick around until the end of the video for our look at the university world of Brightchester. And remember, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, please and thank you. So here we are at an empty Magnolia Blossom Park, and we are going to be talking about all this fun stuff over here. So we have outdoor plants, we have outdoor water decor, we have terrain tools, and we have pools and fountains. So for outdoor plants, this is where you'll find trees, shrubs, flowers, and rocks, and that's pretty self-explanatory. You pick what you want and you throw it down. So we're going to jump over here to the terrain tools. When we click on that, we have a couple of different options here. We have the paint tool, and this is what is going to give you, this is what's going to change your ground cover. And you just click and hold, and you drag out where you want to change your ground cover. We have some grass and flowers. We have stone and we have dirt and sand. In the middle here, this is your brush size. And then you can choose if you want a circular brush or a square brush. Oh, that's very small. And then this bottom one is the softness. So if you go more solid, it's gonna be a more definite edge like that. Whereas if you go softer, it's going to be a less dramatic edge. The eraser tool will let you erase what you've done. And then this is where things get interesting. This is the terrain manipulation. And it turns bright yellow. So everywhere that there is a grid square, that is flat. So technically over here is not flat, and this little piece right here is not flat. We have the basic tools that most games that allow you to manipulate the terrain have. We have raised terrain. We have lower terrain. We have smooth. We have flatten. Flatten to height. And this last one is a one click button to completely flatten the lot. So for this flatten to height one, this enables this little slider right here, and you can raise or lower it. It will flatten the terrain to that height. In the middle, we have our brush size and shape again, as well as the softness adjuster. And we also have a speed adjuster. So if we set it to super fast and make it the lines pretty harsh, this is what will happen. So it went up super fast. Now, if we take it down slow and go all the way soft, this is going to be a super gradual increase. So you can play with it and find out which speed and softness works for you. 
So if we take our smoothing tool and we smooth some of this out and we get it to where the topography lines disappear, your sims can now route on that terrain without using stairs. They still can't get up this part unless we smooth that out as well. But if the lines disappear, they're good to go. So the most recently added terrain feature is the water tool. To add a pond or a lake or a natural occurring body of water of any kind, you need to dig a hole first. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So then we can click on water. We've got four options. We've got raise water, lower water, fill to height, and then remove water. So when you click on the raise water, you can click each time and it will slowly increase the amount of water. Okay. Same for decrease. Each click will take it down a little bit. Fill to height enables this slider. And then we have remove water. So in order for your sims to be able to interact with the water, some of it does have to be shallow. And you can tell if it's deep or shallow by enabling the water depth map right here. And the light green is shallow, and then the dark blue is deep. You can also keep this view on while you are in uh, terrain manipulation. So if you wanted to take this side a little bit deeper, you can do so. Or if you wanted to bring it up. And then we can turn it off to see what we actually have going on here. So then we can go to pools and fountains. The top one is the pool, second one is pool trim, third one is fountains, and fourth one is fountain trims. So the pool tools kind of work the same way as the room tools. You can click and drag and there's a pool. You can make a custom shape. And then if you do two pools that have a common wall, they will join together. Now, unlike the room tools, I do use the triangle shape pretty often when I'm doing pools to get rid of weird corners that I come up with sometimes. So if you click on your pool, again, like the room tools, you get the choice of raising and lowering the walls moving it, rotating it, copying it, and you can also raise the foundation. Rotating the pools can be kind of destructive, so it's recommended that you pick it up and move it rather than just trying to rotate it. And then for pool trims, if you want to give your pool a little special look and not just this plain white line going around it, you can add a trim. So then for fountains, basically same idea. They're just a little bit more shallow. You can drag it out. Make your own shape. and add a trim. Okay, so then when we go to outdoor water decor, this is where we can change the appearance of the water. Ooh. And these work in fountains and pools as well. Here we have pond objects, and we have logs, and 
water plants, some algae, lily pads, and then these are some fountain objects. I love this little frog. But these do not work in a pool unless you cheat them in. So for fountain decorations, this is where you have the water emitters. And then we also have some of the pool drains. Some decor that you can put on the bottom of the pool. In the bottom of the fountain. This is a pretty light. And then you have some freestanding fountains as well. In this tab right here, this is where you're going to find drains again, as well as the pool floaties and ladders and diving platforms. And then if you use these, these will create bubbles and steam in your pools. I don't know if these work in fountains. I don't know if there's an area big enough. So these do not work in fountains. Do they work in natural? And it does not appear that they work in natural either. So then this last one is pond effects and this one is awesome. You can add some nature spawners and what'll happen is in build mode, it'll just show up as a tile like that. But then in, in live mode, the tadpoles will really be in there. And we have tadpoles, we have some country fish, we even have a gator and we have some swans, ducks, And some more lily pads. This one's really cool, the unidentified submerged object. And we also have dragonflies, mosquitoes, and fireflies. Going back up to the pond objects real quick, there is a fishing sign here and you can add that and you can stock your ponds with any fish that your households have discovered. If you create a pond and your household has not discovered any fish or you haven't stocked it, then there's not going to be any fish in there. And also the water emitters will work in a pond if it is shallow enough. But it has to be super shallow for that to work. I brought one of my sims here just so that we can see the effects in action. We have to give the gator a little bit of time. There's the unidentified submerged object right there. And there's our gator. That's pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about that. So then over here, this is how our little fountain objects look. And then over here we have our steam and bubbles going on. That's pretty cool. And it's hard to see because it is daytime, but like I said, the lotus flower is a light. So that's about it for our super quick look at landscaping and the terrain tools. Stick around for our look at Brightchester. So I have my sim Ace Foreman helping us out with this. Yes, Ace Foreman is the sim that works in my construction zone. Ha ha ha. Yeah. All right. So this is the world of Brightchester. And on the right, we have the Foxbury Institute. Over on the left, we have University of Brightchester. And then in the middle is kind of the common ground. And admittedly, I have never been to this world. I have not even played university yet. So we will go ahead and start at the Foxbury Institute. 
We have some university housing. As well as kind of like a common hall. So we'll go ahead and just go there. So this is the Foxbury side of the world. Sadly, I have not played University yet. I've had it since it came out, but I have not played it yet. So I'm really not sure about all the stuff that you can do in this world and with this pack. It does look like there are fishing areas over on this side. So it looks like the Sims are pretty much limited to this area, but still, again, walk around and explore. You never know what you're going to find. So now we will go ahead and go to this middle section here, and we will head to the library. Here we are in the common area between the campuses, and your Sims can pretty much go from where we're at now to this other side and they can walk along all the main paths to get there. And now we are on the Brightchester side of the world and it's beautiful. I love the architecture here and the vines on the side of the buildings and all that fun stuff. But let's see where we can actually go. Your Sims can access these grills down here, a fishing area. And they can pretty much walk across until they get to these posts. This is a very pretty area. I just haven't explored it yet. Oh, I like that building. I think that's, I think this is one of the buildings that has the classrooms. And that was our super quick look at Brightchester. I apologize. I have not played in this world at all. I don't even think I've ever come here even just to look at it. So I am sorry that it is a short video, but absolutely, your sims should go to college and explore this area. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Next time we will be back with Brittany and Brent. Until then, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Questions, kind comments, and feedback are always welcome. And remember, be a nice human. Bye.